Oh, 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 hello! How's everybody doing today? I'm doing the salsa. Just kidding, we're not doing the salsa today. Hopefully you did my last video this morning because you need to be warm for this because we are stretching because we probably all need to be working on that. Well, we have the time and hopefully the space and you have your chairs and you have your brooms because you're going to want like this much room around you. If you have long legs, you're going to want more. But today we're essentially just stretching, okay? I'm going to be running you through a lot of different variations of stretching just so we can cover a lot of different muscle groups. Uh, there is different variations of stretching that you can be doing. Today we will be doing mostly passive. There is a bit of active stuff that I can show you as well. Or some assisted or over stretching, which are different variations as well, where you're pushing yourself past a point uh, that you can do on your own, okay? So you'll need assistance with like a band or a belt. If you have that around, you can do that as well. But we're going to do just some basic stretching that you should be doing uh, post-workout. Why we want to be stretching? Because if you are putting tension on your muscles over time, probably day in, day out, day to day basis, if you're doing a lot of loading with weights, your muscles are going to be tightening up. As well as strengthening, they will be tightening, right? So we want to stretch those muscles out, uh, regain or keep up the capacity of mobility that you have or flexibility, right? Uh, the more mobile you are and the more functional you can keep that up uh, helps with a little bit more of injury prevention, right? We don't want to get too tight in certain places from repetitive movements. Over time, you will tighten in certain areas. Uh, you may still uh, keep up the mobility or flexibility that you have in other ranges, right? And that's where we get a bit of imbalance, right? So we want to keep up full range, full flexibility in every muscle group that we can so we aren't creating those imbalances, which further down the line might give you a little bit of an injury. So we're going to prevent that and we're going to keep everything flexible. So hopefully you did a workout. Hopefully you're super warm because you want to be doing this after your workout. I wouldn't suggest doing a lot of stretching before your workout. You want to be mobilizing before you do anything. So this is for after your muscles are super sweaty. You did your workout. Now we need to stretch out those muscles. Uh, if you want to, you can roll as well, but this is just your stretches. So first thing we're going to start with is our hamstrings. So. If you have tight hamstrings and sitting up straight is going to be hard for you, this is going to be fun. Fun. Okay. So we're going to start in a pike position, okay? Legs out straight. The goal for ourselves today is we're going to try to hinge through those hip sockets, lean forward to stretch out the hamstrings, okay? If you are so tight that your knees are soft, you might want to start with one leg, okay? So. This one, we are going to get a little bit more glute activation uh, or more for our stretching because this is a passive stretch. So not a lot of activation, more stretching in there, okay? So I'm bringing the one foot up above my knee right here. I'm going to push this leg down and then I'm going to reach for my toe, okay? So this is putting a little bit more pressure on the knee to keep the leg straight as well as I'm going to be hinging forward through my hips so I still get that stretch through the hamstring, okay? So depending on which one's tighter, you'll either feel it more in the glute or you'll feel it more in the hamstring, whichever one you were tighter with, okay? So this one is focusing on both your glute and your hamstring. Again, if you're a little tighter, this is what I'd suggest first, just so you're not having that strain on both hamstrings first. So you can stretch one out and then the other. So I usually say, Reach for the toe if you can, keeping that leg as straight and locked out as possible. Uh, we want a little bit more strain through the hamstring or stretch, so I keep the foot flexed. You can point the toe. That is elongating your hamstring more, so you're getting a little bit less of a stretch, okay? So you're going to be including also down through the calves if you flex, okay? So you're going to be pulling up and stretching forward, okay? You should feel that all the way down to the heel. So do the same thing on the other side as well. Bring that foot up above the knee. You'll feel through the glute and through the hamstring. You want to be hinging forward. So in any of our stretching movements, you want to make sure you're not arching through the back to stretch. 
because then you're not actually going to be rotating through the hips, right? I'm leading over through my upper back. You'll get a good stretch through your back, but we're trying to focus on the hamstrings. So the rotation has to come through the hips. So you want to pull your belly button into your knee, okay? So same thing, stretching down, okay? If we're super tight, you got to do one and then the other, okay? If you've loosened up a bit, then you can do both. Okay, so I want you to be same thing. Pull your belly button into your knees. Keep your legs as straight as you can, reaching forward. So you can either reach as far as you can with your hands. You can grab the feet, pull them up for a little bit more stretch through the hamstring, and then pull yourself forward, okay? Pulling your belly button into your legs. Stretching down through those hamstrings, okay? So that is our pike stretch for the hammies. But we want to stretch them a little bit more. So, uh, depending on where you're tighter, so it can be more interior through the hamstrings and your quads as well. So, more medial or lateral, right? So, I like to have a variation for my stretch. So, I will do a straddle, okay? So, same thing, you can start with flexed feet or you can point them. If you're tighter, I would point. I'm going to get you guys to walk yourself forward. You want to be coming through. Reach through. You want to stretch through. It's going to be more the medial. I don't know what that says. Oh, okay. What do I say? Oh, hi, Magnus. <laughs> we have viewers. I can't see on my TV who's viewing. So if you are there, give me a nice wave in the comments because I'm saying hello. He's our four-time world's strongest man, Magnus. So if you're watching, continue watching. Maybe stretch too. Show us your stretching after. <laughs> so we're going to continue our stretching. So this one is going to be more medial hamstring and also your adductors. So if you do a lot of squats, if you do a lot of lunges, there's a lot of activation of those. So we need to make sure they're stretching out. We don't want to keep them too tight. So you're going to be reaching forward, same thing. Pull your belly button towards the floor. If you get a bit of rotation in with the toes, it's okay. But I would like you guys to try to keep your knee facing the ceiling while you do this stretch. If it helps, you can push the legs out while you're stretching forward, okay? If you're flexible enough, you can pretty much just drop to the floor and push the legs out. That requires a lot of flexibility, so you're going to have to work your way up there. So, same thing, you're just stretching, belly button to the floor, and you'll feel that all the way down through the hamstrings and the adductors. While we're in this position, I would like us to stretch more through the lats and the serratus here. So, a stretch while we're sitting in this position, a nice comfortable position hopefully. We're going to be rotating through our torso, okay? So again, you're going to be getting a hamstring stretch out of this, but also stretching all the way down this whole side here. So here, sometimes I'll bring my arm opposite side just so I have somewhere to reach to keep my shoulders square. While I'm reaching over for this foot, I'm going to be stretching all the way up this lat, through those ribs, through those obliques, everything. Maybe even your tricep if you're super tight. Same thing, I try to reach across with the opposite hand, trying to keep my shoulders a little bit more square while I'm leaning over, okay? So same thing, I'm going to feel this all the way, hopefully from that hip, all the way up into that shoulder, okay? Feel it a lot through my obliques, okay? So now I'm incorporating a little bit more upper body as well as stretching my lower body, okay? So that is our pike and that is our straddle. Now I'm going to bring us up. We're going to try to mobilize and stretch out our calves a bit, okay? So if you can sit in a squat with like no, no pressure on the knees, you can do that. If you need to stabilize yourself and put weight on your knees with your elbows, you can do that because we're going to utilize that and stretch out the ankle a bit, okay? So I'm essentially trying to add pressure to this knee to push it over that toe while keeping my heel on the floor, okay? You're going to feel a little bit of a stretch up through the calf. That's good. You want to be stretching both of those ankles out. So if you have limited range through your ankles, like say maybe during your squat, this is a good exercise. If you have limited 
mobility. It's either mobility of your joint, per se, or your flexibility. So if we want to optimize that mobility, that's just your basic range. We need to stretch out the muscle if you do actually have more range through that joint, okay? Sometimes your limitation isn't through just the overall function of the joint. It comes from the flexibility and the tightness of the muscle surrounding it. So if we can optimize it, we need to stretch the muscles, okay? So same thing, you're just going to be leaning over those ankles. A lot of these stretches, I would say, holding-wise, I do about 30 seconds. Um, I try to push myself through a lot of the stretches, give myself a little bit more give per 10 seconds. So I'm pushing a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. Again, this is at the end of your workout, so you can push yourself a little bit more as long as you're nothing, not doing anything weight loading or crazy afterwards because your muscles are going to be stretched out. So when you are stretching and over stretching, uh, that is kind of a micro tear happening in your muscles, right? You're stretching those fibers out. So you don't want to do anything loading afterwards, okay? So still on my ankles, I'm bringing my feet behind me. I'm going to point my toes out. I'm going to get you guys to try to keep your heels together. If you can, I want you to sit on your feet, okay? So depending on which is tighter for you, a lot of people, it's their ankles. So your heels are going to want to come out. You're going to rotate out. Keep your heels together. Sit right on those heels. You're going to feel a stretch through that ankle, okay? Right up through here, okay? Through those shins, okay? If your quads are tight, you're going to feel it more at the insertion of your quads, okay? That's okay. We can stretch our quads out and our ankles at the same time. So stretching those ankles out, I like to lean back a little bit more so you can get a little bit more stretch through the quads if I'm sitting here anyways. So if you can lean back a lot, go for it. If you want to more target your ankles, lift up, okay? I'm adding more pressure onto the actual bottom of the top side of my foot. So I'm pulling up and I'm still getting a stretch to here. So I'm taking tension off my quads. I'm focusing just on my ankles, okay? If that is a lot and that's a big stretch, you can bring it up, okay? So a smaller stretch, you're still keeping tension on the top side of that foot, and I'm putting pressure, okay? For me, I have a large amount of flexibility, so I can put pressure right on the top. You need to build up to that. So same thing, I'm sitting here I've already got tension on the bottom foot if that feels comfortable bring the foot up I'm keeping tension on the top and I'm pushing that heel through almost through the foot so you're building up that flexibility through that ankle okay good good now that our ankles are moving you might want to roll them out a bit because it's a good good thing when we're stretching to roll those out because the joint, the muscles, everything's been stretched out. You want to move it after, okay? So, now we've stretched out our hamstrings, stretched out our ankles a bit. We're going to get into a lunge position. So, if you've done a lunge before, we should know hips are square, okay? Hip sockets are in line with each other, okay? I am going to be focusing on stretching out my hip flexor now. So, when you're doing a lunge, this is more of a passive stretch, or you can do more active. So active, I'm going to squeeze my glutes and push through this hip flexor, okay? So squeezing your glutes is going to keep that pelvis in a neutral position, so you're forcing that stretch through this hip flexor here, okay? That is our goal. We don't want to open up. If I open up, I can get really low, right? That's because my back has given out, and that's where that flexibility is coming through. It's not coming through that hip flexor. I've opened up my hips. I want to stay as neutral as possible and force pressure through the hip flexor, okay? If this feels pretty good, you can step it up. So a good stretch is bringing the toe up and pulling in. So now you'll feel a little bit more through the quads, but it should be adding more tension through the hip flexor as well. If you're having a hard time with this, do opposite hand to opposite foot. Stay forward, okay? This is going to stretch a lot more through the quad. Gives you a little bit more balance, okay? So I can pull that foot into my butt 
and stretch through that quad and the hip flexor, okay? Woo! So do the same thing on the other side. Keep my hips as neutral as possible. Pushing through the hip suck, okay? Push your glute through. I'm stretching through that hip flexor. If I need to, I can come down. Bring the foot up, grab, okay? Opposite hand, opposite foot. I'm pulling through that hip flexor, okay? Good, good stretch there. Good. So that one is more your hip flexors. If we want to utilize a chair, we can. If this is a little bit harder and we can't reach back and you don't have the flexibility with your arms, you can come up with your chair back till up, okay? If I am not short, oh, oh I am short, but <laughs> I'm not too short that I can't reach this chair, which is good. Okay, so same thing, you can either just keep the toe up, lean forward, or you want to put pressure just on that hip flexor, make sure that toe's up on the chair. I am actually going to be pushing my hips in toward the chair, okay? See this pressure here? Knees on the floor, toe is up. I'm pushing my hips back nice and square. This hip on the opposite side isn't lifting up, okay? Keep it forced facing down to the floor, okay? We don't want to open those hips up. So that I'm square, I'm leaning back. And again, same thing, it's going to help making it slightly more active. Push your glute through that hip, okay? So I'm getting that stretch all the way down through here, okay? So that's assisted with the chair, okay? You can also do that up just against the wall. Putting your foot up against the wall, but it helps to have a hook for your toe to have something on, okay? So that's more your hip flexors uh, and also your quads. If you want to, you can stand it up. Again, this one's a little bit more easy. I can stand here, utilize this for balance. I'm just gonna grab that back foot and I'm stretching down through the quad, down through the hip flexor, okay? So a lot of these hip flexor stretches, I'm focusing more on the hip flexors for a lot of these because that's generally where everyone is most tight and where we don't focus. Uh, again, you're gonna be stretching your quads regardless in these stretches, but it's just good to know and focus on that area because then you know where your hip placement is, okay? We want to make sure our hips are in the right spot. So same thing, I'm just using this chair for balance. You can do the same with both sides. Balancing, I'm going to grab my foot, stretch it out. If we're too tight for this, use a band, wrap it around your foot, pull up, okay? We're just focusing on keeping that pelvis neutral while you're stretching it out, okay? There's no point in doing the stretch if you're just gonna open up the hips, okay? Stretching down and through. Beautiful, so that is a lot of our lower body, okay? I'm gonna keep this chair here because we need to stretch our upper body, okay? So if we've got a chair at home, good. What we're gonna do is stretch out our back, our shoulders and our chest here, okay? So what I like to do, you can start with palms on the chair. If it feels a little bit more comfortable, I would like you to do both regardless. You could do more neutral with hands in a fist position, okay? So you're gonna scooch those knees back. I'm gonna straighten my arms out as much as I can, and I'm gonna be pushing my head through my shoulders, okay? So right now, all I'm focusing on is pushing my chest through and my head through my shoulders, okay? You can relax and let everything go to stretch a little bit further. That's all right. This is just a stretch, okay? We are trying to get as much range as we can through that lat and through that shoulder, okay? Woo, stretch to the floor. If that feels pretty easy, you can layer down, reach your hands up, and push your head to the floor. Same thing, neutral or palms, whichever you prefer. Push your head into the floor, okay? You're gonna feel a big stretch through your lats and through your chest, okay? That is more our upper body. We're gonna focus on triceps now, okay? So, triceps, you can do just a basic overhead position. So just grabbing the arm, pulling it over your head, 
and trying to pull that elbow behind, okay? You'll feel that down through the lat and down through the tricep. That's a pretty basic one that you can do with no equipment required. Pulling the elbow behind the head, same thing. You can lean a little bit if you wanna have that same stretch we did in our straddle. It's good to utilize everything. Or if you want, you can take it a little step higher. This one's gonna be a lot harder. Elbows on the chair and then stretching through, okay? Woo! Yeah, that's a good stretch. So, same thing, you're doing both at the same time instead of just one hand overhead. You're gonna feel that through more of the delts, chest, and triceps, okay? So elbows on chair instead of hands, same idea. Push your head through, okay? Pushing through, stretching that out, okay? Now we're gonna do our chest. La, 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 la. La, la, la. Oh, having chairs is so handy. Okay, so let's start stretched out, okay? Um, yeah, let's start with straight arms, okay? So if you have a doorway, you can utilize the doorway too. I'm just using the chairs. So I'm gonna put palms up. I can come all the way up to my elbows if I want because I am just focusing on pulling through the pecs, okay? So I'm here. I'm gonna try to keep myself as neutral as possible and I'm gonna push myself through, okay? You wanna feel that stretch. So I keep my palms facing the chair, okay? So if I'm here, I'm stretching and pushing myself through the chairs, okay? So for me, that's pretty easy. If you do it in a doorway, you can push yourself through with straight arms. You're gonna get a lot more of a stretch. If you pull it in closer, we do bent arms, okay? So I'm gonna bend my arms, I'm gonna start above. Same thing, palms. Now stretching through your chest. Woo! Yeah, so any tightness through those pecs, or just even through that rotator, you're gonna feel it there, okay? Pushing your chest through the chairs, trying to keep your elbows on the chair. If that feels easy, move them closer, okay? So the further they are, uh, you're gonna have less width in between to push through, right? So if your arms are pushing way behind your head, you need to have a smaller gap. So when I get through here, my elbows are practically behind my head, okay? So for me, I would almost need to lie down because I have a little bit more flexibility there, okay? So that is more for our chest, okay? We're gonna throw these chairs all the way with you. Okay, oh my gosh, I feel pretty good there. Chest, triceps, biceps, so a good stretch for me. I will grab palm. This is more down through the forearms and your bicep here. So if I'm trying to stretch out, I can just pull that wrist and that hand toward me. It's good to stretch out your forearms here. Again, you can do it on the floor as well. This is more for your wrists and your forearms, but you will get all the way up into your bicep. So I'm gonna come down on the floor, using my wrists, I'm gonna fly my hands out. I'm gonna push my shoulders over top of my wrists as much as I can, okay? So I have my elbows locked out right now. Ooh, yeah, you're gonna feel that more through the digitor muscles down through the forearms, okay? Stretching there. Then you can also put hands here, okay? So I have the back side of my hand on the floor, okay? I wouldn't put a lot of pressure on this if you aren't confident in your flexibility skills with your hands and your wrists. Uh, for me, I can put a little bit more weight and I'm gonna be scooching myself back, okay? Same thing, you're getting a good old stretch up through those forearms into the elbow, you'll feel that. If you do a lot of grip strength movements, so deadlifts, any heavy carries, you should be working on stretching through there, rolling through there, because that's where you're gonna tighten up quickly, okay? A lot of grip strength, you'll feel it through the forearms. So good to keep that range and flexibility up there. I'll roll them out a bit. You can do it manually, just with your hands pushing against, pushing against. I'm a little more flexible, so I had to utilize my body weight in a lot of my stretching, okay? Adding more pressure, okay? Uh, we're gonna do one more, just super important uh, for 
I know the majority of us, if we're doing a lot of weight loading, our piriformis or glutes can be super, super tight and our back gets tightened up. So these are probably the most important stretches I would say to be working on. Foot across again, just like how we started out today. We're going to pull that foot up. Okay. So now I'm in this position. I'm going to get you to push that knee down. That stretching out through that glute. That's good. If we need a little bit more. You can walk yourself into that foot, okay? You're just trying to push that knee down. Good, good stretch there. That's where we tend to get a little tighter in a lot of our lower body pressing movements. So like our squats, our lunges. Glutes are a harder muscle to get into and work on, especially with flexibility or even just rolling. So if you have a tennis ball, you can use that. But these are stretches that are going to be useful for that that you can be doing. Okay, same thing. I'm going to walk myself into my legs as close as I can because I have that flexibility and I'm going to push that knee down. Okay. Woo woo, stretching that out. Good. Now I need a little bit more stretch through that glue and my lower, lower back we'll say. We'll focus on there. So we want that spine to still maintain uh, mobility and flexibility there. So not only this range, but we want a bit of twisting, okay? So I lay on my back. I'm going to rotate that hip over, so I'm bringing this knee up, okay? So I have rotated my spine because I'm actually facing the ceiling. I fully rest my knee on the floor, okay? There's no stretch here yet. I'm going to open this arm up and reach for the floor behind me, okay? So you'll feel your spine in that rotated position. You're going to pull that knee up. You might feel a stretch through the glute, but we're mostly looking through that back, okay? You want to be able to rotate. So for me, I can fully have both palms on the facing the ceiling with my hands on the floor with my knee touching the floor, okay? So that's fairly good flexibility. For some of us, we might not be able to do that. I would elevate the knee on something. So if you have like a block or a roller or a book, so when I am doing this, I can put something underneath my knee and still focus on rotating through that spine, okay? Because you want to maintain <laughs> good flexibility through there. If you are doing loading over time, uh, you can tend to be a little more compact, okay? So these are just stretches to keep that range. Uh, there's a lot of other exercises you can be doing beforehand, but I'll save that for another day. So this is just a stretch for it, okay? You want to maintain range through your spine. We don't want to compress it so much with all that heavy lifting and never stretch that you no longer can rotate your spine, okay? We want to maintain that. So if you need to, keep that knee elevated. If you have the flexibility, I will give pressure here, and then I'll reach this hand to the floor. Rotate through that spine, okay? Good flexibility through my back. Okay. So everything feels pretty good. I don't know about you guys. My arms, my triceps, my neck. Oh, good stretch. So, traps, necks. If you get headaches a lot. Uh, I know I get headaches a lot, but that generally comes from my traps. I need to do a lot of rolling out. A lot of extra stretching there, but all of the muscles in your neck as well, if we're doing loading, your neck has a lot of muscles. So we want to also stretch that. So a good one, I will place my hand just above the clavicle and then I will hold tension there and I'll lean my head to the opposite side, okay? So there's a lot of tight muscles that'll be in there. Same thing on the other side. I place my fingers just above the clavicle and I'm going to be stretching and rotating my head to the opposite side, okay? So you'll probably feel tension and tightness where your fingers are holding. Stretch across, okay? Stretch. So I'm getting range through my head. If you want, you can stretch forward. Same thing. I'll put pressure on my traps at the back and then I'll stretch forward, okay? This one's just a little bit more assisted stretching just because I am so tight. You guys probably are too, so good stretching. But for today, those were just basic uh, passive stretching. A few in there were, or no, 
Yeah, those are just your basic stretches. Those were more passive. There was a few active ones where we isolated our glutes to get a little bit more stretch through the hip flexor. Uh, that's all right. Uh, but that was my only focus today because we wanted something that you can just do on your own day-to-day -day basis, okay? There's a lot of other stretching that we can work on down the line, per se, if you wanted to work on splits, if we wanted to work up a lot more mobility for other exercises that are our goals. There's specific stretching we can do with bands, belts, uh, with a partner if we would like, that we can be doing stretching with, okay? So, that is all for today with our stretching. So hopefully we enjoyed that and hopefully you work on that because we want to maintain that flexibility that we have so we can maintain in our end the end goal, our mobility for a lot of our movements that we work on. So, hopefully you enjoyed that and we'll be tuning in on Wednesday because Wednesday will be a surprise. Who knows what it'll be? Do you? No. So if you have questions about any of the stretching, give me a comment and uh, I can answer it there. Have a good time.